how T-Rex became the ultimate dinosaur king, and what led to its downfall. I'll be exploring the origins and evolution of the carnivorous theropods that eventually led to the rise of T-Rex, one of the last non-bird dinosaurs that roamed 66 million years ago. I'll trace T-Rex's lineage all the way back to the Jurassic period, showing you the ancestral fossils that might have created the path for T-Rex, which literally means the king in Latin. Plus, we'll look into how T-Rex would have become if it had survived till modern times. Tyrannosaurus Rex got its name in 1905, and for almost 80 years, it was seen as the peak of an evolutionary trend, where carnivorous theropods kept getting bigger throughout the Mesozoic era, the age of dinosaurs. The idea was that small carnivores like Herrerasaurus from the late Triassic evolved into larger Jurassic predators like Allosaurus and Megalosaurus, which then gave rise to even bigger dinosaurs like Albertosaurus and Gorgosaurus, eventually leading to the mighty T-Rex. This theory suggested that evolution was driving towards larger and more dominant forms, a concept seemingly supported by the fossil record. But in 1994, paleontologist Thomas Holtz shook things up. His study showed that T. rex wasn't closely related to those massive Jurassic carnivores. Instead, it was more closely related to a small, lesser-known dinosaur called Avamimus, a late Cretaceous early Oviraptorosaur from Asia. This surprising finding led to a flurry of studies in the 1990s, where paleontologists debated how theropods were actually related. Most studies ended up linking T. rex more closely with dinosaurs, like Ornithomimus, ostrich-like dinosaurs, and trodonts, brainy, narrow-skulled dinosaurs of the late Cretaceous, rather than with giants like Allosaurus. So, the ancestor of T. rex lived in a Jurassic world filled with large predators like Allosaurus, but also swift, smaller, feathered dinosaurs. This ancestor was likely an underdog in a world dominated by bigger and smaller predators. However, it had a couple of advantages. First, it probably occupied a unique niche, hunting sauropod nestlings and eggs, as it was smaller, quicker, and more nimble. These ancestors of Tyrannosaurus rex lived in Asia and North America, as these continents were connected during the Jurassic period. That's where we find fossils of T. rex and its close relative, Tarbosaurus, in the late Cretaceous. Tyrannosaurids, it turns out, are exclusive to the Northern Hemisphere and developed independently from their southern counterparts after the continent split in the mid-Jurassic. This new perspective on their origins kicked off the search for the Jurassic ancestor of T. rex. According to Thomas Holtz in The Dinosauria, 2nd edition 2004, the only recognized Jurassic member of the Tyrannosauroidea superfamily is Stoxosaurus, known from a few bones found in Utah's Morrison Formation. This small dinosaur, about 2 meters long, shows features similar to later Tyrannosaurids. Other potential ancestors include Ornitholestes and Coelurus, both from the same formation. While Ornitholestes is better known thanks to a more complete skeleton, including a skull, Coelurus offers a glimpse of a slender, fast-moving dinosaur, though it lacks a skull. These smaller dinosaurs, around 2 meters long, are good candidates for the early relatives of T. rex. A third contender is Tanicolagreus, found in the 1990s, which has longer, more slender limbs and claws that resemble those of oviraptors. However, the skull is fragmentary, leaving some uncertainty about its exact appearance. In England, a remarkable middle Jurassic dinosaur called Proceratosaurus was discovered in 1910. Once thought to be related to Ceratosaurus, it is now considered closer to Ornitholestes, and possibly an ancestor of Tyrannosaurus. Another important find is Guanlong from China, described in 2006. This crested dinosaur shares features with both Proceratosaurus and Ornitholestes, making it a strong candidate for a T. rex ancestor. These crested dinosaurs, including Proceratosaurus, Guanlong, Stoxosaurus, Ornitholestes, Chilescus, and Cenotyrannus, form a group called Proceratosauridae. It's likely that Tyrannosaurus evolved from this family, but it's not until we look at early Cretaceous fossils that we see dinosaurs more closely related to T. rex. One of the oldest possible ancestors from this period is DeLong, a tiny dinosaur from 126 million years ago. 
DeLong had long, slender limbs and a foot structure similar to the Arctometatarsis, indicating it was built for speed. This foot structure, though not fully developed, shows a transition towards the specialized feet of later Tyrannosaurids, making DeLong a significant link in the evolutionary chain leading to T. rex. DeLong was a small dinosaur, about 1.5 meters long, but it makes a strong case as a possible ancestor to Tyrannosaurus. Like Ornitholestes and Tyrannosaurus, DeLong also had a second anti-orbital foramen. So, how do you go from a turkey-sized dinosaur like DeLong to the massive Tyrannosaurus rex? Well, there's 70 million years of evolution in between. The next known Tyrannosaurid after DeLong is Eotyrannus, a 4-meter-long dinosaur from a skull fragment found on the Isle of Wight in southern England. In 2009, Paul Cerno and others described a dinosaur that looked like a smaller version of Tyrannosaurus rex, with similar features like two digits on tiny arms and an arctomatarsis foot. It was about 2.5 meters long and was reported to come from the Yixian Formation of China. However, it turned out to be a juvenile Tarbosaurus from Mongolia that was smuggled into the U.S. and sold to a Chicago eye doctor. This fossil, named Raptorex, or Baby Tarbosaurus, highlights how even experienced paleontologists can be misled when fossils seem to fit expectations too well. Many small Tyrannosaurus-like fossils from the late Cretaceous are likely younger individuals. For example, a crushed skull of Xiongguanlong from the early Cretaceous in China is slightly larger than Eodoranus, but still related to Tyrannosaurus based on the skull alone. Appalachiosaurus, a Tyrannosaurid from Alabama, despite its incomplete fossil remains, shows a mix of advanced and primitive features, including a well-developed Arctomatarsis in the foot. As we move closer to Tyrannosaurus rex, we find fossils from the late Cretaceous, around 76 to 66 million years ago. These fossils are from larger animals, about 5 to 10 meters long, and all had fully developed Arctomatarsis feet. These fossils are mainly found in North America and Asia, with Europe mostly underwater during this time. They also likely had two-digit hands, like Tyrannosaurus and Tarbosaurus. The discovery of these late Cretaceous relatives of Tyrannosaurus rex, each of which could have become famous, shows why this gigantic dinosaur has captured our imagination. Now let's look into the fall of these larger-than-imagination animals. Around 66 million years ago, the Tyrannosaurus rex and all other non-avian dinosaurs went extinct during the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, which wiped out about 75% of Earth's species. The leading theory is that a giant asteroid or comet, about six miles wide, hit the Earth near the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, creating the Chicxulub Crater. This impact unleashed energy like billions of atomic bombs, causing immediate destruction with intense heat, huge fires, and shock waves that wiped out nearby life right away. It also threw tons of debris, dust, and sulfur into the atmosphere, blocking sunlight and cooling the planet, leading to an impact winter that disrupted food chains by halting photosynthesis. Long-term effects like acid rain, wildfires, and ocean acidification added to the stress on ecosystems, contributing to the mass extinction. While the asteroid impact is seen as the main culprit, other factors like volcanic activity, especially from the Deccan Traps in India, and shifting sea levels might have already been putting stress on ecosystems before the asteroid struck. Combined, these events caused the extinction of the T. rex and many other species, ending the age of dinosaurs, and setting the stage for mammals, and eventually you to take over. If the Tyrannosaurus rex had survived the asteroid impact and continued to evolve, it might have developed some amazing abilities. Imagine T. rex with vision as sharp as, or even better than that of hawks and eagles. As their facial structure became narrower and their eyes grew larger, their eyesight could have improved drastically over millions of years, allowing them to spot prey from several kilometers away. Besides their famously tiny arms, T. rex might have evolved to have longer, more muscular arms, improving their agility and range of motion, making them even more formidable predators. As we know from history, their size grew, so it's possible that they might have grown to be even larger beasts. We'll never know for sure. What do you think? If T-Rex had continued to evolve, how do you think it would have changed? Let me know in the comments.
Right now, what we have closest to this predator is a prey to humankind. I am talking about chickens. Chickens, like most other creatures, evolved and adapted to become the species we know today. Believe it or not, the chicken is closely linked to the T-Rex. In 2003, scientists uncovered a remarkable T-Rex fossil with soft tissue intact, allowing them to harvest enough DNA for studies. A 68-million-year-old fossil was compared to DNA from 21 extant animal species. And what was the result? T-Rex DNA included proteins that were most similar to those identified in chicken DNA. The chicken's genome was the first to be sequenced in order to advance their studies. This means that scientists discovered the specific sequence of their DNA. This enabled scientists gather more data to demonstrate that the chicken is the closest living relative to the T-Rex. Even before discovering the fossil evidence, some experts noticed similarities between chickens and T-Rex. Both chickens and T-Rex walk on two legs, have scaly feet with sharp claws, and have arched necks and large heads. There was evidence that some of these dinosaurs possessed feathers on their bodies and bird-like lungs. A fun T-Rex had feathers on his head like a mullet. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe for more, and hit the bell icon to get updates for our latest videos. Thanks for watching, see ya.